so my name is Daniel Coben. I'm a senior consultant, subject leader, dad, nerd, and a foodie, among all my other interests and hobbies. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about a basically a simple concept. Well, for, oh, always I love PowerPoint. Uh, and for all things known, I'm from Norway, northern part, North Cape, living current in Trondheim. And to give some perspectives to people from America, it's basically northern Canada is how far north we're from. I love to make it simple. And I follow the old KISS principle, which means basically keep it simple, stupid, or keep it simple, silly. Because to make it simple for the end user requires much more from us who develop apps. In this case, I built a simple quiz app. And it works such that if you press the quiz, the first one is a gallery. I will show you the text specs behind it. But if you filter on uh, the distinct category, you can have several categories in your own uh, list. And just by using the distinct one, you get them up. Click one of them and we'll clear collect from the source to a collection of questions in this case. The next screen will be a basic gallery where we filter for the first where the answer is blank. In this case, we can take then a list of questions and just show one at a time. Then we have two buttons, the right answer, no matter if it's yes or no, uh, and the wrong answer. Uh, color coded and also convenient to put on the right side. So when you have it on a phone, going through a checklist where you have to check a lot of things, uh, for instance, uh, checking through security checklist, um, you can just press the check yes button with your right, and you will also stop up and press the other one, of course, when you discover something wrong. It will update two collections, both the question collection to update this um, uh, form so that the next question will pop up, but also its own answer collection. When all the answers are filled out, that means no more uh, empty answers, uh, we will make this uh, pop-up visible and also then hide uh, the original quiz. Gives you two options. You can basically submit it directly or you can see the answers and that will just show you the gallery of answers. One of the things which I found uh, well, made me most proud when I was the solution to just toggle the answers on and off. So when you get the questions and you get the answers uh, still color coded, of course, and if you click them, they will just toggle between the right and the wrong answer. So you can easily see if you checked everything before you submit uh, the request. A benefit of this app uh, is, first of all, it takes any sources. Since it uses collections in between, you can use any source available. Um, I've done it uh, with Excel, with SharePoint, which Excel is not a database. I've done it with SharePoint list and of course with Dataverse. Um, and the, the app I will show you today is one of the earlier prototypes when I built it. Now building an app is not just building an app. Um, I had to build a prototype first and the very first prototype I learned a few things from. Uh, first of all, when I started this, I didn't figure out the um, first in a gallery. So what I did was I built one page per question. It made it easy to modify it when you had just it's a simple app, but it was terrible when you got like 40 questions to answer. And so I sat down and solved my problem. So finding, uh, just starting building a prototype quite early uh, gives you the ability to find all the issues and problems and then try to solve them afterwards. Uh, this one didn't use a uh, database of any sort. Everything was in the app. It was terrible, but a great learning session. A few things I've learned from this what, uh, is that you could set the variable uh, to self-text. So I just displayed the text within this box since I didn't have a database and added this uh, variable with the answer. Uh, also, also then navigate to the next screen. From this, I learned collections beats variables any day. Uh, for any time you need to get more information out. So it's a great learning experience in itself. I also needed to get a lot of data and like test the backend because it's stored to a SharePoint list at one point and an Excel sheet another. So building a small quick fill for troubleshooting where it actually just filled out all the fields with random values. Uh, and to make it more realistic, I said 90% of the values to be true random and 90% to be uh, full, 10% uh, to be false. 
this made me fill up a, a quick um, list and also made me test parts of the app instead of every time going through each and one question at a time. But there are more features within this. So I thought I would uh, bump over to the actual app or one of the earlier editions of the app. It is in Norwegian. Um, so for some of you, it's kind of be annoying, especially since we use uh, commas and semicolons incorrectly. But I will, I will guide you through uh, some of the techniques I used uh, to solve this problem. So first of all, uh, I have added a menu on top, uh, which is a toggle menu, and it also scales. I have the gallery to be the first one. So let's go in and see. Using containers. Um, uh, oh, sorry, this first app didn't have the gallery. I just added buttons. Uh, but uh, within each button, it will collect, clear collect uh, questions from the form. This early edition of the app also uses uh, Excel in backend. So uh, for all of you who care about data storage, yeah, I did the wrong thing. But it was fun because it's easy to just build up a simple form within Excel to have different questions and just collect, collect them based on uh, whichever uh, button you press. So if I ever click, click one, it will gather the question. That's why it loads a little slow. And then it will just show the gallery view. And here we use the gallery view in the quiz screen. And here we content gallery. Filter first, collection question where answer is blank. So very simple, but it makes it easy to build up the app. Then it will patch the question with its self text. I could also do it from a database in the uh, later editions. I didn't use the self text, but in this early part, we used actually to, we actually chose to pick out the self text as an answer to patch it. So clicking through this one, uh, it has also another feature which I've tested at this point. It's uh, changes type of questions. So this is a question that has a range instead. So I can actually add the number of something and click the button to add the answer again. This is where self-answer is quite nice. So clicking through everything will give you the end screen where you can either send it in or look at the answers. And the answers are toggable buttons, so I can change before submitting every answer. It's also added uh, up and down buttons to change the value. Uh, of of the screen. It will also color code when you reach max and minimum. That's a by effect of, of the formatting I use. To cover that part, actually, I can show a small thing. Uh, and that's adding an icon on top. So I will scroll in. Uh, it will be hidden here, but it's an icon on top, which increases the answer. And also then an a icon on bottom, which you will see below here which decreases the answer. Very simple solutions, but made it uh, better. Uh, one thing I fixed in later app is actually that I uh, made the icons take half the screen. This one allowed me to manually input the data, uh, but I preferred not to, uh, uh, preferred not to do it um, because it's, uh, let's see if I can get it back up. Control, see? Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, there we go. Um, take the half the screen because manual ad uh, adding information is with the small numbers you use for this. It's better to just uh, let the buttons take half the screen. Using visible and, and invisible is the key to solve most of these issues. So I've been using a lot of them. Um, visible. Which is basically uh, a lot of if and and, but uh, if it's a type of number, which means it's a range, uh, and uh, we set the display, display mode uh, to true or false. I said, yeah, so it's to display it uh, if it's a range, if not, it's hidden. So it's a very simple thing. The buttons themselves, there, answer toggle button. We'll update the answer, and here as well we do uh, if this is the true-false 
type of question than show or not. So it's a very simple thing all over, but from the end use perspective, I did test it as the early prototype to our customer and just the concept was really loved. They used paper forms today and this improved it quite a lot for them. I have added more features in the modern edition and uh, among them is uh, the ability to edit questions. Uh, this one is the earliest prototype of it. One feature here is that you see all questions listed in a row. I will actually play this one. So all questions are in a row, and when you click one of them, it will expand. In this way, you will not fill the screen with too much information. It's easier to see, and you can then choose to add the right and the wrong answer uh, based on uh, the question you have. So it's uh, yes could be no, and no could be yes. Everything is possible. This is also done with basic galleries and viewing uh, on select. So they will be visible on select, but not besides that. Just checking the time here. I started my timer a little slow, but I think I have a few more minutes to uh, show you. Oh. There we go, scroll. Um, yeah, a data source in this case, if it's irrelevant, it's just basically a order, uh, categories, questions, uh, descriptions, true, false, which type it is, and of course, what's generated by the Power Apps. So this is just general tables created within um, uh, within an Excel file to solve the question. So this is this is more or less the basic apps. I have a few tricks which I've learned, which is nice. It's, one of them is uh, that the menu toggles by using the height and remove the height based on visible. So a lot of if and when you can change the height, so it will toggle nicely. And another nice feature uh, is that the icon up here, when you start a quiz, at the moment that you press a yes button, you get a reset up here. So the icon is in the same place, it just changes based on where you are. And just the same here using visible. If I then want to reset, it will go back to start, just clearing all the answers. That will cover most of mine. Um, so um, thank you for having me and listening. Uh, I have bits of code on GitHub, it's a mess. I have a blog which I update seldomly, teams.se, uh, and I'm available on LinkedIn. So thanks for today. Thank you.